Okay, now in continuing where we were and in um, getting to where we need to go and in this uh, discipleship discipleship series, there's some basic um, there's some basic principles, some first principles and some basic principles that need to be taught and this is why we're continuing in in this spirit, the spirit of the great invitation, right? The great invitation to see the speech of his imperial majesty of Kadu Sabatachin, who speaks about we in Ethiopia. You understand? We in Ethiopia. We had some notes on this. Um, in continuing with this particular teaching, and, and we promised, or we didn't really promise in that sense, but we said, as Yah wills, that we would get into um, a teaching on atonement. And I think this is a good opportunity as the next Torah portion, the 30th portion, is um, Kedoshim. And the Holy Spirit had directed my attention to a verse in the Psalms. And Psalms are some very, very important keys. And it's only through Christos, Christ and his kingly character, that we can unlock the keys as well as overstand and know. Remember discipleship? Remember the one on that we've just been teaching on um, with uh, Matthew chapter 13, right? And in chapter 13 where Christ says that he speaks these in parables, which for lack of a better word, but this is a good word, he speaks in mythological types. You understand? In mythological types, but to the disciples, he, he reveals the mysteries. It's for them to know, to gnosis, to have the science or the scientia of the mysteries. See, this, this, this right, even this authority, do the, the sons and the daughters. You understand? And the sons and daughters are truly the disciples. You understand? Because once becoming a son or a daughter, one must be trained. One must be disciplined. You understand? One comes and receives salvation, receives immunity, right? Immunity from the prosecution, the global, the world judgment, right? And they begin to learn in discipleship, right? And thirdly, to serve, that means to minister in yoke, to be yoke fellows. You know what I'm saying? And yoke, that yoke right there is instruction with Adonai with our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, the glory of our Father, Abu Kaddus. Now here in Psalm 50, Psalm 50, this Psalm 50 right here, which is a very interesting psalm, the verse that, that the Holy Spirit pointed my attention to was verse 5. Psalm 50 Verse 5, it says right here, the English is, Gather my saints together to me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Ka'ar sugar le meswa ita kidan ye komutena kedusanun sebisabulet. Sebisabulet or sebisabulet. Sebisabulet. Likno? Sebisabulet. 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 Ka'ar sugar le mes wa eta kidan ye komutin kedusanun sebisabulet. Gather. That means gather. This is like calling the general assembly. Right, calling the Gubaye, the General Assembly. Now it's interesting because this links directly with this portion in the Torah that we're studying, the twenty ninth portion, even going into the 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 thirtieth coming up this Shabbat, and this is the Hamus, this is Thursday, right? Um, May twenty twelve. Now, what is very interesting is that the the 30th is called Kedoshim, which means saints, or the Kedusan. Then it says to gather them. Now let's 
hear the psalm, let's put the psalm into its context, right? And let's get the um, Schofield for a moment. Let's get the Schofield uh, for a moment, and let's just compare this with the Schofield. Give me a moment. All right, here we go. The, because the Schofield has some very good um, study notes some study notes for the disciples, and if you get into discipline and really unlock, you know, the value of these study notes. Now, here we're in Psalm Psalm 50, right, which is a psalm of Asaph, right? And that name needs to be broken down and overstood from an Ethiopic and a Hebrew perspective. But let's first move forward into this psalm. It says, The mighty God, even the Lord, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Ya amalik amlak, egeziariya tenagere, kut hayim mocha jemro, iska megabiyawa deres, midrint arat. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. God hath shine. Ka kabru wa wubet ka tsiyon e gizyabi her gilit hono yimeta. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. Am la kachin yimeta. Zimim Mayilim Isata Besita Yikat Alam Bezuriawima Bezu Aulo Ale. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Bela Yalowina Samayina Midrinim Behizbu Le Mefred Yitara. Now, this is interesting, this, the English, and it, it kind of corresponds to also the sense of the Amharic, where it says, Belai Yalowin Samayin Midrinema Behizbuwa Le Mefred Yitaral. The English says, He shall call to the heavens, to the heavens. So we can't ignore the heavens now. He shall call to the heavens from above. So for, he's going to call to the heavens from above, not calling to the heavens from below, but he will call to the heavens from, from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Then it says, gather my saints together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Ka'arusugar le meswa'ita kidan yekomutin kedusanun seba sebulet. Now, here's what's very interesting. Here's what's very interesting. Now, it says those, these saints, they have made a covenant. That means a contract. You know what a contract is? Have you studied contract law? See, it's interesting because ones don't really appreciate love, what we have here in the scriptures in the Bible. And, and therefore, some of the the seals we're not able to unseal because of a lack of comprehension. If we begin to comp comprehend that, that when we live within a contract is the same thing to say living within the covenant. But we have fallen away as lost sheep, the sheep that have gone astray from that covenant. Now, the saints, the Kedusan, those who have separated themselves, you understand? from Babylon in spirit and in truth to the king of kings and his Christ are those Kedusan. And they have made a covenant, that's, that's an agreement, you understand, a Kidan, a covenant with the true and living God in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, by sacrifice. Now that sacrifice, the true sacrifice, we just read, um, in the last portion, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Let's just go there right now, and let's be reminded of this. To Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God. Follow God as their children, 
and walk in love as Christos, the Mashiach, the Anointed One, also have loved us, has loved I and I, and I, and have given himself for us, for I and I and I, an offering and a sacrifice to God, his Father, our Father, for a sweet-smelling savor. I mean, a sweet-smelling fragrance. Like the Kana Bush. You understand? A sweet-smelling fragrance. So, understand that link right there. Now, when we start to study this word sacrifice, and then we start to connect this, there's more to this particular song. But we want to teach here to the point that we have in heart and mind, if y'all wills. And this is continuing in the 29th Torah portion. So this should be included with the 29th um, Torah portion. Ahare Moto Kamotu Bechwala. Now, let us go to chapter, um, chapter 16. Chapter 16, previously, we had touched on the two goats, right? The two goats. One goat. It's to Yahweh, it's for Yahweh, it's sacrifice for Yahweh, and the other goat is sent into the wilderness. Now we say, how interesting is this? When we understand, remember, this is a parable. That's a parable right there, right? Like Christ spoke in parables, that's a parable right there. What is the mystery? Do you know what the mystery of this is? We sought to give some illumination on that particular matter in the 29th RSS, the RSS, the Rastafari um, Sabbatical Scrolls and Sabbatical Studies. Some say the RSS is that whole internet protocol, but on a spiritual level, that's what it is too. It is that spiritual uh, ethernet, you understand, protocol, because it says that we shall meet him, the true rapture, we shall meet him in the ear. We shall meet him in the ether on the spiritual level, even of consciousness. You understand? Know Imagine that. You understand? Know because it's real. You know this? Now, here we want to touch on atonement, right? Atonement. Now, the atonement of Christ, what is this atonement? The atonement of Yeshua or the atonement of Christos, the Moshiach, as it's interpreted by the Old Testament sacrificial types. Now, there are five types of Old Testament sacrifici five sacrificial types. We've touched on these five. Now, the five is like the five fingers of the hand. And there's a very interesting connection between the hand, or the yod, you understand, and, 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 and the number five. You understand the number five. Remember, they said that five were wise, right, and five were foolish. You understand? And five in metaphysical teaching, five is 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 the uh, cipher of power. Five refers to power, and you can study the biblical, you know, link and relationship of numbers. I would suggest one Google Bible numbers, interpreting Bible numbers. Bible numbers have some very interesting um, applications. You understand some very interesting applications, and we hear a lot about how the so-called Satanists, they use numbers and all this kind of stuff, but we need to understand the tools that are overcomer tools. You understand the tools that overcome the seclorum and the, the God of this world. So the atonement of Christos, as interpreted by the Old Testament sacrificial types, has these necessary elements. One, it is substitutionary. The offering, notice this, the offering, the offering takes the place, right? The offering takes the offerer's place in death. Is, so when we're looking at sacrifice, see this is a sacrifice, but the sacrifice of Christos becometh at one man. It restores us into the oneness that which humanity or the primordial Cadmon Adam or the black man, if you will, you understand, fell from. 
because Adam is a type of a parable as well. You know what I'm saying? But we know, you know what I'm saying, that the black man, as we say, has fallen. If we study history and even our story within history, we can see that. Many of us don't like to admit that. We say the white man, the white man, the white man, so forth and so on. And we're finding little other excuses, but our problem as a lost sheep is a God problem. And we will continue to say that because that is exactly what it is. Now, the, the um, restoration, in, once again, into the family of God is through our big brother. It's through Yeshua HaMoshiach, us as that ethnic, racial, Hebrew, Aperu, Afro, Afro, Ephraim, African, Hebrew people, Afro-Shemitic people. Now, the first element is that it's substitutionary. So the offering takes the offer's place in death. Secondly, the law of God is not evaded, but it is honored. The word honor also is a very important word. Put down a note in, in, your, in, in, your, in your journal and your copy books on honor because our system, the Ethiopian Hebrew system, there is an honor code. And you'll find that honor is also translated as the word glory, glory. So understanding the connection of the word glory, there's a, a couple of Hebrew words that express it. You understand? Um, kavod, you understand? Which in Amarinya, in a sense, is like kabada, is like to say heavy, but they say kavod, kavod. Then there is also um, shekinah, you understand? Or shekinah, right? But in the... Amharic in the ancient Afro Shemitic, it is Kubr, you understand? Kubr, right? And now the law, which is Torah and the law of God, is not evaded but is honored. Every sacrificial death was an execution of the sentence of the law. So it, it, it was a substitutionary, you understand, offering for Israel. Now the sinlessness of him who bore our sins is expressed in every animal sacrifice. If we start to study the animal sacrifices, all of these are types of Yeshua. All of these are types of Christ and by extension of the suffering of the righteous African, the righteous black man, the righteous Ethiopian Hebrew and Beta Israel in him and through him. It must be without blemish. You understand? It must be without blemish. Now, fourthly, the effect of the atoning work of the Moshiach is typified, is, according to types, in the promises, it shall be forgiven him. And secondly, in the peace offering. Now, the peace offering in ancient Egypt was known as the Hotep or the Hetep, and the het, Hetep and the Hept. Hetep and the Hept. In the Ethiopic, ancient Ethiopic, that is Hopt. Hopt. And Hopt, interestingly enough, is called today like riches or wealth. You understand? Know but then when we look at the word Sega, which is grace, and Belitsiga, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting link between wealth, as we call wealth today, it's an outer thing. You know what I'm saying? It's the credit slips that you call money, you know what I'm saying, or other kind of um, financial value in this modern world. But we're losing sight on what true wealth is. You know what I'm saying? On what true wealth is and therefore what true peace is. So what are people pursuing? Are they pursuing peace? You know what I'm saying? Or are they pursuing getting rich or die, try it? Are they pursuing the worldly, secular things, right? So those folks need the atonement. You, even though they may not accept it, they need the atonement because they have no peace of their conscience. Many of their consciences get burned out. But in Christ, through Christ, you understand, we get a forgiveness, you understand, the promise, the expectation of forgiveness as well as the peace offering, which is the expression of fellowship or brotherhood. So we're initiating this particular um, Rastafari discipleship and saying, let us seek to present 
some of the basic discipleship elements, right? And then um, inspire, encourage, exhort you all to study and to find the truth for yourself because that is the prerequisite before we can go forward in this fellowship together, before we can really begin to even build the kingdom or do the true work, we need to learn about it. As His Majesty teaches, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, education is the key. And this is all basic stuff. We, most of us should have already known these sort of things. These are just basic stuff. Understand that, basic stuff. So we, we actually have to play, as they say, catch up on this, uh, an intensive and intensive schooling need to begin, but each one must take the personal responsibility. You understand? True Christian or true Christianity is about personal responsibility. You understand? It's not making anyone, but one must freely choose. Now, the expression of fellowship, which is the peace offering, is the highest privilege of the saint. So once again, we have this word saint. So let's put this word saint since we're kind of going into this particular portion right here, um, the Torah portion coming up um, on saints, right? Saint Bamarinya is Kedusane, right? Q, um, I put an apostrophe there, K, right? D U D U S A S A N N. Sometimes you could put a apostrophe there. N. It's a schwa. What's called even the Hebrew? It's a schwa. It's a it's a, it's a schwa vowel. A, a schwa vowel, vowel is like how the e in believe is said. When people say believe, and then sometimes you see some would write it a b apostrophe. You understand? Because it has that uh. It's a uh sound. So that's the particular sound. Uh, do son, right? And now, what's interesting is that in the Hebrew of the particular um, psalm that we just read, um, verse uh, 5 of Psalm 50, where it says, gather to me, right? Gather to me. Gather my saints together to me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, Right? So this word is hasid, right? Hasid. Right? Now, the, the word um, kedoshim is coming up in the next portion, and some spell it like this, even though it's a Q sound. It's like um, Kabbalah is really uh, ke, kebele, kebele, but they spell it often with a K. Do you understand? which um, show that they are not the people because they do not even know the proper pronunciation, nor can they express it. You see what I'm saying? They may have a knowledge of it, but they cannot actualize it. That means the gates, the spiritual gates, they cannot open. Let's just say it as, as it is. But many of them have done a lot of research. I'm speaking about the, the Jews or the European Jews, and we give thanks for the more diligent research because it helps us, you understand, in this present time to um, catch up, you understand, on what we needed to know for more than 400 years. If we knew that, we would not be in this situation. Notice Ethiopia is the only place in Africa that wasn't colonized, but yet it's also the only place in Africa which had laid and built on a foundation which is Hebraic or Judaic, and truly Judaic and truly Christian, you understand, as so-called black people. So, you know, go figure. You know what I'm saying? Go figure. Why were they speared and then why were they targeted in 1936 for extermination? You know what I'm saying? The, the genocide. That's what you read about in Revelation where it talk about the, the martyrs. You understand know how the saints those dressed in the white robes, you understand, were martyred, the barefoot Ethiopian Hebrew martyrs. So we have a connection at the very time with the conquering line of the tribe of Judah on the scene. But a lot of people, you know, they close their ears and they close their eyes to it, and we know what the fate 
of these and those are. But on this particular point right here, it says, call my saints, right, to me. Now, the better translation of this, let's put this right here, would be holy ones, right, holy ones. This is the proper one, but in that particular psalm, it had chassid. I want us to study chassid. You understand? Um, and I want I and I as Rastafari to take a, take a new view of the Hasid and the Hasidim, speaking as Hebrews doctrinally, seeing that many of them are in opposition to this, um, to the Jews who call themselves Jews and have put forward this Rothschild Zionism. I mean, that's a very interesting point that it would not get much traction in the media. But many of us who have actually um, engaged with many of that particular community, because they, you know, a lot of the Hasidim, they don't admit this, but, you know, they, they burn Anabush too. I, and I know this because I saw them come to the brethren and, and purchase these sort of things for their Torah study. So a lot of folks really don't know what they don't know. But for I and I, we must know the truth. Now, Exodus chapter uh, 29 and 33 also has a note and a link and a connection with this. And let's just go there, 29 and 33, while we're on this particular point right now. 29 and 30, uh, 33, it says, And they shall eat those things wherein the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify. The word sanctify means make holy as well, make adduce, sanctify them, set them apart. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. Now this this kind of ties into the very same point um, concerning the cannabis. People say, you're talking about weed? No. Satan deal with weed. We're speaking about cannabis. You understand? We're talking about cannabis. You understand? That? We're not speaking about weed. You, you know what I mean? You're speaking about pot? We can cook in a pot or you can pee in a pot, but we're not talking about pot. Are you talking about ganja? I mean, yeah, I heard that before. A lot of nice songs that talk about that, but that being that, this is a new day. No, we're talking about Anna Bush. You understand? Are you talking about Kali? Nah, we don't even want to even deal with those strange gods right now, those foreign gods. We don't respect those foreign gods. It says, thou should not fear them. So that means we don't respect those foreign gods. Yeah, we'll learn about them, but they're not our gods, and we're not going to say that the, the cannabis, the herb, you know, is, is, is John's holy thing, and then give it a name of false gods. I know a lot of you are used to this. It may take a little bit of, you know, a moment, you understand, in being born again in the spirit of your mind, being conformed, you understand, to, to his son. Of being conformed to the word and the testimony, but it's true. Think about it. Meditate on those sort of things. But here it's interesting in Exodus, right? In, right. Let's put this here. Psalm also relates Psalm 50 and 5, right? Check out Psalm 50 and 5, right? These are some of the main verses with this particular, with this particular teaching right here, 50 and 5. We also um, linked uh, Ephesians, right? Ephesians 5 and 2, right? And then here we have Exodus, right, 29 and 33. Now, this gives us a very important um, message right here because we're speaking about, first of all, the Holy One. Holy ones mean that one has separated themselves, you understand, to Yah, to Jah, in and through our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, for his purpose, which is the purpose of the will of God, manifesting the will of God and building the kingdom, manifesting the kingdom of God in the earth with our brothers and our sisters of the true and the faithful God. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of... It's kind of straightforward and direct. A lot of folks want to make it more complicated. You know what I'm saying? The only thing one has to do is, is be still, still their mind, and begin to learn. Education 
is the key. Because once we begin to know and we, we, be, we begin to see and hear and our hearts understand the reality, the next thing is to do it, is to actualize it. The thing is, ones have been doing, doing a lot of stuff, but it's not according to his will. So when it's not getting blessed, when it's not making any effect, they wonder why. Because they are being willingly disobedient. You know, they're saying they are of him but not doing the things that he said. They're not living within the covenant. They're not living within the contract. They are taking the name to themselves falsely. All we're doing is, is, is preaching and bearing witness to the word because there's, there's a real work of Jah to be done, and I and I want to be a part of it. You always know, say, I and I want to, we have faith in it, and we want to spread the word to our brothers and sisters so that they also can be prepared before it's too late. Now, this verse, we're going to go into more detail on this with the, with the cannabis because it's interesting. It says, and they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them, but a stranger... A stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. Now, in Old Testament time, this would mean that if you're not ethnically of the Beta Israel, you understand, or really part of the family as it were, you understand, or an Israelite, born an Israelite, you are not to partake of this. That's interesting because it matches why. Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, came to the world to save his people. It's only in grace that he has extended, you understand, in and according to his word, that salvation, you understand, or a, a, a certain immunity to the Gentiles. Let's understand that. Christ was born, and they said his name would be called Yeshua, Jesus, because he shall save what? His people. He came to his own, his own didn't accept them, but as many, some did. You understand? So there's always that remnant. I want you to remember that. Now, the, 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 the note, there's a note right here because it says the note right here now ties into this basic teaching about atonement. See, I want you to understand atonement. The first step towards the fulfilling, you understand, of, of, of his word in that discipleship, you see, in that discipleship is this atonement. Because what is this at one meant? Right? At one meant. Kapar in the Hebrew means to cover. The English word atonement, at one meant, is not a translation of the Hebrew kapar. They're telling us this right here in the footnote of, of the Schofield that the word that we get so used to, atonement, is not a a, a translation of the Hebrew kapar, but a translator's interpretation. So the translator interpreted atonement into the Old Testament Bible and Bible text based on the veil being rent in the New Testament sense of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Because we know that the Old Testament types were were almost like, um, you know, like in, 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 in kindergarten for children. You give them a lot of, like, like, big letters and a lot of, like, you teach them simple things in a big way. You understand? So, so as they grow, they get to a more refined level. So it's like, the, it's like his son. I've called my son out of Egypt. Israel was a child. So had to be given these almost baby steps. So we're going back over these baby steps, but there's much that's of value. We're, we're not able to properly understand what is meant in the New Testament. One can say that Christ fulfilled the Old Testament type. You hear Christians say it all the time. Ask them, explain. In other words, explain and show me the evidence, exhibit A, exhibit B. You know what I'm saying? Many of them sadly can't even do that. They, they, they'll be like, well, like, it's, we're not in the Old Testament anymore, it's not, so on and so on. But they believe this because, because but they don't, they don't know. You see what I'm saying? And because they don't know, you know what I'm saying, they're not really in the movement of Christ, though they say they're church and they're Christians, but they're in a spiritual inertia. You understand? A spiritual inertia. And, um, 
you know, we can talk about the many are called, few are chosen, but it's something you have to just meditate on this. Now, according to the scriptures, the legal sacrifice, the legal sacrifice, that means the lawful sacrifice, what did it do? It covered the offerer's sin. And the sin is the hot iat, the missing of the mark. I got some notes I want to share with you on that. Since, since we're kind of up into this already, I, I, I got a couple of notes here that I want to share with you. I noticed something very, very interesting. You know anything about the legal system? You, you've been hearing about laws. You, you, you have anybody or know anybody that was convicted of a crime? Well, you know, we, we deal with prison ministry. And um, we, we, we want more help from our brothers and sisters, you know, in that process. But first, discipleship and learn these things. Get a good foundation. Because when you have that good foundation, you can tap into that spiritual, the spiritual resources. You know what I'm saying? It won't be like people who just want to do something but don't really have that foundation, that groundation. You know what I'm saying? Christ didn't send out the disciples to do anything before he taught them. And he said he sent us out to also make disciples, you understand, and teaching them those things that he also taught us. But the thing I learned about sin, I, 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 I did this word search. You know, the Spirit inspired me to this word search. You know, the whole etymology and the true word, what do these words really mean, and, 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 and the whole idea about law, you understand, both the law that we have to deal with and the unjust misapplication of this worldly American or whatever law, these different laws here, you understand? And Torah, which is also law, and we saw something interesting that sin, right, is what you call a crime. You know, like a crime? That, that in, in, in the modern legal sense, you have three kind of levels, right? You have... One, the lowest level is a misdemeanor, right? And a misdemeanor is a wrong action, almost literally a wrong action or a wrongdoing. Then I remember translating the Alpha of the Prayer and finding the word bedel, right? And bedel also means literally it's, it's, it's not like a, a sin, hakiyat, but it's like a wrongdoing. You understand, like a, a misstep, a, a minor offense, and therefore for wrongdoing, which is forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It should really be forgive us our wrongdoing.